Okay, you can see we're about to place concrete. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. The sun just got up. I think it rose at about 5 minutes to 8 today. But we're ready to place concrete. This 156 lineal foot, 10 foot high basement with 8 corners and a 4 foot 1 radius in the front. Beam pockets are getting put in. 33 meters of concrete. That's going to be a whole bunch of yards. I don't know how many yards that is. That's close to 40, I guess. Probably 38 meter or yards of concrete. 8 inch concrete walls. So this should be a pretty easy pour, pretty casual. We've taken all the bracing and we've leaned them to the bracing, the wall to the bracing a little bit. We put this 2x4 around the outside as a stiffener or just to keep the wall from stretching. We want this wall to be just right on the numbers because we're going to be continuing up going to the main floor and second floor. So we're ready to go. Looks like the pump's calling for us. Okay, here you can see a beam pocket they put into the wall. Now they've cut one of the ties putting it in and they use a piece of foam and they they use some spray foam on one side and then they tie strapped it so they know it's not going to float during concrete placement now the back side here is going to be weak because they've cut the ties but we know that we're not going that high with concrete we're only going to go up about halfway so it's going to be strong enough for this pour and then we'll put some strength on it for the next pour when you're placing concrete in the corner you don't place right directly in the corner you place stay a couple feet from the corner and then go around the corner just like he's doing right now and let the concrete roll into the corner and then you can vibrate it and that way you won't move anything and you're using the concrete in the wall as an anchor even though the concrete's liquid it's going to actually hold the block in place so you fill up on either side of the corner and then you fill the corner and the concrete on either side actually holds things in place so here's where the beam pocket is and we're just putting the vibrator on either side of it to make sure that the bottom is consolidated properly and be nice and flat. You can see how good a job the vibrator does. He puts it in, puts it in real quick, comes out real slow and you'll see the concrete drop a little bit and the bubbles coming up. It's exactly what we want it to do. You don't have to worry about that yet. What's that? You gave a bad uh, direction there. You said you don't have to worry about that yet. And I was trying to tell you that you should tell them you don't have to worry at all. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I like that. That's good declaration, I like that. This is why we have the holes in the bottom of the window. To make sure we can get the air out, that concrete can get down through. So we have one viber down the bottom right now and one on the side. Concrete went up about halfway up on the on the buck, so it's about this high at the window, and they're trying to roll that concrete underneath. Our ties going across the plastic ties they actually restrict that concrete from flowing, so you want to hit it with the vibrator and that liquefies it and it just runs right in. Okay, good job on the quarter inch. Now the first thing I do is I come along and I see the strings touching here so we need to push this one in and we'll just get the string away from the, the wood. We've already got our shims in each end so just keep pushing. That's good. Let's do this one a little bit. That's good. So I just go by eye and I make sure that it's close to being the same. This one needs to come back in or back towards the brace. Keep going. That's good. That moves quick when you have them straight on like that. This one needs to go towards the brace quite a bit. That's good. Quite a bit. Okay, I got my little measuring thing here, which is right on at the corner. So now we'll start right here. That's perfect. This one needs to go in towards the house. Push it away from the brace. A little bit more. That's good. We will have to do this several times because it's moving quite a bit. Okay, this one a little bit. Same, same direction. 
That's good. Same thing. Good. Towards you. That's good. That one's good. That one's good. Beautiful. Yeah, it looks good. So really, how long did that take? Take an extra couple minutes, we put a string line on, make it nice and tight, put some shims on, and you know that the, the wall is straight. If you just use your eyeball, it will not be straight. Nobody has a straight eyeball, it doesn't work. Hey, we finished this job now, and it only took two hours to pour it. And then the pump cleaned up and everything. Right now it's, um, it's three hours since we started pouring. It was dark three hours ago. And we've straightened all the walls. We pulled all the tape off the top, made sure all the beam pockets were good, leveled all the walls, made sure this radius was good, and it stayed really well. This thing hooked up really good. I was really impressed with that. Now I want to show you before before I go, I want to show you the, the vibrators that we used on this job. This here is a wall braider. This one hooks onto an 18 volt drill and it actually, you can see that it shakes the wall. So if I put it on there, it shakes the wall and not only does it shake the wall, it shakes our ties which shakes the rebar. When it shakes the rebar, it gets the concrete all the way around the rebar. That's what you want to do. Now we use this at the bottom of the wall knowing that our vibrators our internal vibrators would not get all the way to the bottom. At the bottom of the wall there was a couple of bars of rebar and we wanted to make sure that concrete was encasing that rebar and filling up below it. So that's why we use this at the bottom of the wall. Whenever you use this you start at the bottom and you pull it up as you use it, just like this. The reason you do that is you're chasing the air to the top. You don't want to put it here and, and go down because you're really not doing anything. You want to pull that air to the top and consolidate that wall properly. So that's what we use at the bottom. Then we grab this 8-footer. This is an internal vibrator. It's an 18 volt. We stuck that in the wall. You stick it in as far as you can, fast, and then you turn it on you start pulling it up. Now you can just keep it running and, and use it on as you plunge it in. But really the only time it's really working is when you pull it up to the top. That's when it's pulling that air up to the top and settling the rebar, the concrete around the rebar. Then we grab this other vibrator. This one is a four foot whip on it. This works really nice going around the top of the wall and inside windows and doing stem walls, frost walls, grade beams, things like that. Very, very nice vibrator. These batteries last almost the whole job. And that's about it. All jobs have to be vibrated because you want to get that rebar encased in concrete. I think we're good.